Hello. Hey, Dad. How's that white Christmas looking? You promised, remember? <laughs> Meredith! Of course, it's coming down as we speak. Wait till you see it. Great. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, my plane lands Tuesday at 5.30. Perfect. How will you get here? Will someone pick you up? Obviously. I've got the best chauffeur around. His name starts with a T and ends with Amos Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I hear he's the best in the business. I'll make sure he's there. 5.30 sharp. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you soon. Two more nights, Em. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Same here. Say hi to Mom for me. Bye, Dad. Bye, Em. Have a safe trip. Good morning, Thomas. I bet you woke up feeling like a million dollars after winning that monster pot last night. Morning, Frank. It felt like $96.40, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great night's sleep. Ha! <laughs> I bet. It looks like you've hit the jackpot again today. There's hardly any Christmas mail rush because of the snow. Ah, oh, that's a pity. I really don't mind being outside in the snow. Well, I do. Snow's for looking at, not for walking through. Take it easy out there today. Hey, Beth. How are you on this fine day? Thomas, hi. Well, business as usual. No, I'm just joking. The situation is not that dire. <laughs> <laughs> really? So no Mildred rummaging for discounts today? Well, I'll tell you. She was actually in here just now. I sold her a beautiful 1986 calendar that had kittens wearing mittens on the front. <laughs> I kid you not. I wasn't even aware that was part of my inventory. Besides Mildred, there's been an odd customer or two today, and would you believe, one of them was even looking for a full set of encyclopedias. Oh, never knew you had a clone walking around out there. <laughs> well, that certainly would be something, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be enough books to discuss or wine to consume. Either way... Did you know that the world's largest encyclopedia was created in 15th century China and comprised about 11,000 books? Isn't that fascinating? Imagine having to load that into your car. I'm starting to relate. I'm still holding this delivery. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Well, come here then. Put it on the counter. How's Emily coming along with Christmas dinner, by the way? I can imagine she's pretty excited about Meredith coming over. So let me know if she needs any more cookbooks. I've got this beauty from Good Housekeeping that's all the rage right now. I'll be sure to ask her. But you know how Emily gets in the kitchen. There'll be so much food, we'll be eating stuffing all week. <laughs> I suppose you're right. But don't you worry, I'll leave the cookbook. I have a feeling St. Nicholas has other things in store for you this year. Sounds ominous. You have no idea. And what does St. Nick have in store for you this year? Doing anything special? I'm flying out to Georgia tomorrow to spend Christmas with my Daniel and his wife for a few days. We're planning a Hawaii Five-0 marathon. It's my guilty pleasure, and luckily it's theirs too. Ah, Dano. Give him my best when you see him. And his wife, of course. I shall. Right. I better get back to it and get ready for the New Year's sale. I've been in a perpetual fight with my pricing gun lately, so I need all the time I can get. And good things come to those who wait. I'll bring over your presents later in the week. I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve tomorrow, and give my love to Emily and Meredith. Will do. And season's greetings to you two. Hello, Angie. Long time no see. Uh, one package for you today. Thanks, Thomas. How's Emily? Uh, she's very busy. The motel's chronically understaffed. Ah, yes. This must be busy season at the motel. I do like it when out-of-towners come to visit our little hamlet. Especially when they like movies. <laughs> Apparently most of the rooms have been fitted with VCRs now. Should be good for business. So, what do we have here? Oh, right. You okay there, Angie? It's just some things from L.A. 
toiletries, stuff like that. I um, recently ended my relationship. Uh, Angie, I'm so sorry. It's fine. It was my decision, and it was the right decision. The long distance thing just wasn't working out. Still, seeing your spare toothbrush, that shampoo bottle, a stick of deodorant, it just makes it so definite, you know? Like, the LA chapter of my life is now finally completely closed. Sounds like you're dealing with it like a champ, though. How did your ex take it? My ex-girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, she's handling it okay. Other than the passive-aggressive shipping of toiletries, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you not know? <laughs> well, surely it's none of my concern. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly something I walk around advertising around here. <laughs> this is probably the first time I've seen you blush. Breaking up right before Christmas Eve must be extra tough. Yeah, that does add to the melancholy. Timing isn't exactly my strong suit, I guess. Well, I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. And your spare toothbrush. Merry Christmas, Angie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Thomas. My toothbrush and I bid you adieu. Hi, Ben. Got a pretty hefty package here for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Thomas. I've been waiting for that one. Hi, Mr. W. Please, please, please tell me the mail truck needs a tune-up. <laughs> hey, Lori. I didn't know you'd already begun working here. Weren't you supposed to start in January? Yeah, she pestered me into allowing her to start a week early. Already put snow tires on half the town's vehicles. At this rate, I can retire before the end of next summer. But this truck's fine, Lori. I gave it a checkup for Frank less than ten days ago. Ah, oh, are you sure there's nothing I can improve on the old, um, what do you call this thing again? I just call it the mail truck, actually. Uh, boring. We need to come up with a better name than that. Tell you what, Lori. Maybe you can check out the car horn. It sounded a little off last time I checked. The horn, eh? I'm on it. That was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. W. Diaphragm had gotten a little dusty, but it's all better now. The mail truck is honking like a big old goose again. Thanks, Lori. Come to think of it, I will be calling your truck the Goose from here on out. Big, white, wobbly, and with a honking great horn. Honk, honk! The Goose has a nice ring to it. Or a nice honk, anyway. Well, gotta be getting back to my rounds. Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks, Thomas. You too. Hi there, Mr. Mailman. Got anything for me today? Hello, ma'am. Just one parcel. Thank you, sir. It's true what they say about mail carriers and snow. They hate it and long for the summer? No, that it makes them look even more handsome in their uniform. <laughs> Why, thank you, ma'am. That's a nice way to start the week. Oh, I better get this, honey. I'll see you tonight. Oregon Trail Motel. How may I help you? Hello? Hey, Dad. <laughs> Meredith. Are you all packed for tomorrow? Um... Meredith? Dad, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Dad. Don't worry. But I'm just... I'm snowed under with work. It's added 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. This sucks. That's such a bummer, Em. But uh, I, I understand. Thanks, Dad. I'll make it up to you, I promise. We've all worked so hard this year. Can't squander it all in the last week, right? I hate to say it, but it sounds exactly like what you said last year. Have you told your mom yet? Yeah, I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. 
I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. Hey, Em. Is that you? <laughs> if by Em you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean Em for Meredith, then no. <laughs> I just got off the phone with my other Em, so I was pretty sure it was you. <laughs> oh, Thomas. Don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. I know, Em. I don't know what to say. <sighs> just deal with it, like we always do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. Just Mildred? You might as well go for rock bottom and ask Nancy to. Oh, yes. Oh, I'd love to hear them bicker about the cat food assortment at the general store. In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again, too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. Hmm. Major League Baseball umpires are required to wear black underwear while on the job in case they split their pants. Golf is the only sport to have been played on the moon. On February 6th, 1971, Alan Shepard hit a golf ball on the moon. <laughs> Because of the low gravity, it may have traveled more than a mile. Greetings, Nancy. Hello, Thomas. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Mm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not gonna change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. But isn't that the best part of Christmas? I'd rather save myself the time and effort. Fair enough. Have a good day. Wow, a visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. The pleasure is all mine, sir. And this package is yours. Who, boy, Frank came through once again. A uh, package from Frank, huh? What's in it? You don't want to know, Thomas. You don't want to know. But what I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new year with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. Oh, you're in trouble this Sunday, sir. <laughs> I'm glad I can blame the cold for my suddenly shaking hands. <laughs> nice spin, sir. Nice spin indeed. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. Oh, good day, Kay. Hi, Thomas. I've got a parcel for you. Ah, <sighs> thanks. I'm sure Mo. uh... Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out. Uh, how are things with the family? Good. Good. Really looking forward to the holidays. I've been making Grace this great big space station out of ply. It's coming together really nicely. And Barry is getting Max a second-hand guitar as we speak. Oh, that sounds great. I'm sure they can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Neither can I. Uh, what about you and Emily? Got anything special planned for the coming days? Well, sadly, Meredith can't make it this year. Ah, uh, right. I'm sure she'll make it out here sometime. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> All right, best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas too, okay? Hey Thomas, do you think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Well, sorry Frank, they're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Meredith bailed on us, which leaves us with a bit more food than we can handle. Maybe you'd like to volunteer and help us eat it uh, tomorrow evening. Christmas dinner at the Weiss residence. That sounds great, Thomas, but I'm afraid I'm all tied up. The Knicks are playing the Celtics. I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. I'm not going to give you betting advice, Frank. I'm going to have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Hey, Thomas, before you go home, I need a favor. Can you help me with that guy over there? He said he's looking for a job, but I really got to run now. 
Try to find out what he's made of, okay? Good luck. Hello, young man. I heard you were looking for a job. My name's Thomas Weiss, and I've been working for the Postal Service for nearly 40 years. Hi, I'm Matt Kearney. I'm glad someone finally showed up. Nice to meet you, Matt. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm basically a computer expert, kind of in between jobs right now. I've been programming since I was 11 years old. I'm looking to start my own software company. But I assume you are aware that we don't have computers here. Yes, and that's where I come in. I can overhaul this old-fashioned operation and have it running twice as efficiently with the help of computers. Wow, that sounds quite promising. Oh, it's only the beginning. In the future, people won't write letters anymore, and parcels will be delivered by battery-powered mini-helicopters. Uh, right, okay. But let's focus a bit more on the here and now. Do you enjoy working with customers? I think everyone would enjoy someone who skips the small talk and gets the job done as soon as possible. Well, that may be, but my question was if you enjoy working with customers. Sure, sure. I love people. I love helping people. Could we wrap this up now, please? I don't think working here requires an extensive interview process. Sure, Matt. <laughs> I've heard enough. Thanks for applying. We'll be in touch. Okay. But please be aware that I've also received other offers. Bye. Yep, hello. Hey, honey, it's me. Finally found time to call. I'm having such a busy day. Did you invite anyone else over for tomorrow? Yes, I did, but no takers. So it's just you, me, and Mildred. Or is Beth coming as well? Yeah, Beth is coming. So happy I could finally change her mind. <laughs> nice work. She's great company. As opposed to Mildred? <laughs> no. This is not funny. Mildred is a sweetheart. And you better wear the Christmas sweater she knitted for you last year. <laughs> I love Christmas sweaters, so don't worry about it. <laughs> great. So I won't be the only one looking stupid. Oh, by the way, I've got great news. We finally found someone to take some shifts off my hands. That's fantastic. No more 60-hour work weeks. Do you know who it is? I wasn't at the interview, but I was introduced to him after he was hired. Oh, did he seem like a nice guy? Um, uh, I don't know. He didn't say much. His name is Matt. Matt Kearney. He said he's going to completely overhaul our computer system. That's the guy I interviewed this afternoon. Really? Did you like him? He sounded like the perfect candidate, and I'm sure he'll do great. Oh, that's good to hear. But it doesn't matter. He'll be taking the load off my shoulders. And I won't be working alongside him anyway. You'll probably see him more often than I will. And there I was thinking I dodged a bullet. We'll see how it all pans out. Oh, gotta go now. Bye, hun. I am Klaus Kartoffel Knudel. You must be Jimmy, my new partner. We will be the best team in the district. Where is the cop car? Let's catch some crooks. You don't like to talk much, Jimmy. Uh, I need a friggin' coffee. Yeah, coffee and a real donut. I love it. Weiss residence, good morning. Hey, Dad. It's me. Hey there, Em. Merry Dith Christmas. <laughs> I was hoping to hear one of your special holiday puns. Merry Christmas to you, too. I wish I was in P.O. right now. That makes two of us. And probably three, but Mom's at the motel. <laughs> Guess I'm not the only one working today, then. Fine mess I got myself into, huh? Do you want my two cents, or shall I just listen? I reckon I already know what you're thinking, and you're probably right. 
I'll be okay, Dad. Work's progressing nicely, actually. And Tess is coming over later. She's also stuck here. We're going to try to cook up some semblance of a Christmas meal. Oh, that's good to hear, Em. But I'm glad the other M will be in charge of my Christmas dinner. <laughs> Can't disagree there. Her lemon mashed potatoes alone blows all my cooking out of the water. Oh, that reminds me. I need to try to pry that secret recipe out of her. I'm gonna call her at the motel right now. Thanks for talking, Dad. And Merry Death Christmas. <laughs> you got it, Em. Hang in there. <laughs> Thanks. Love you. Oh, Mildred, you shouldn't have. We already have the most beautiful pair of Christmas sweaters in the world. And now we have two sweaters each. <laughs> you must have put so much work into them. Oh, please don't mention it, dearie. Knitting sweaters can be quite straining. But knowing how happy they make you always makes up for it. Well, we're so grateful. Right, Thomas? They're beautiful. Thank you so much, Mildred. I especially like that our sweaters have the same pattern, so I don't have to look in the mirror to admire it. Oh, Thomas, that makes me so happy to hear. I can't wait to start working on next year's designs. I've also made sweaters for Frank and Jack and Robert and Bert, but they all said that wool gives them an allergic reaction. Isn't that a coincidence? Beth, I hope you aren't allergic to wool. You're not going to believe the coincidence, Mildred, but yes, I actually am. And it's such a shame. If only I, too, could celebrate Christmas wearing one of those beautiful sweaters. Anyway, uh, Emily, would you be a darling and pass me the peas, please? Peas? I, I don't... Oh, you mean the string beans. I suppose peas would have gone lovely with the meal as well, now that you mention it. Right, Thomas? Uh, I suppose. Oh, yes, of course, I meant the string beans. Of course, silly me. But let me get on with it. It's time for my presents now. And you may have already guessed that they're books. Mildred, why don't you open yours first? Well, I'm not really one for presents, but I appreciate the gesture. Let's see now. The Cat's Pajamas. I've never heard of it, but it has a nice title, I suppose. It's an encyclopedia about cats. A whiskerpedia, if you will. Someone drew my attention to it, and I immediately thought of you. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? Such a heartfelt gift, isn't it, Thomas? That it is, Emily. That it is. It is a nice gift, Beth. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Mildred. And now for Emily's gift. Oh, why, thank you, Beth. I do always appreciate your taste in books, so I'm looking forward to The Countess and the Carpenter. Oh, would you look at that? Is this a romance novel? I've never really read one of those. Right in one guess, Emily. I hear the writer Summers here, so this book is locally sourced, so to speak. And, dare I say it, the prose is quite... compelling in the romance department, if you catch my drift. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> but you are something else. Thank you. This will certainly get a nice spot on our bookcase. I don't think I'll ever read it, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to reading it already. Thank you so much, dear Beth. You're welcome, Emily. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, Thomas, it's your turn now. Let's see... Crazy Sports Facts 2. Even more Crazy Sports Facts. Whew, boy, I love this stuff. I'm actually reading part one at the moment, so I can tuck into this straight after. Thanks, Beth. You're welcome, Thomas. And you're right, there's some fascinating tidbits in part one as well. Even if one no longer actively plays sports, it's at least fun to read about it, right? Hey, now. Kids playing basketball still regret it when they challenge the mailman for a game of horse. 
Well, there's no shame in admitting that you're not getting any younger, Thomas. In fact, none of us are exactly spring chickens anymore. Things like your arthritis can't magically be wished away by positive thinking. Uh, who's up for some blueberry pie? Speaking of blueberries, my bridge partner, Edna's niece, discovered this mole last week. Hold that thought, Mildred. I really need to take this. Hello? Hi there. Could you put me through to Meredith Weiss, please? Uh, excuse me, who is this? Oh, it's Steve. Steve Mitchell, from work. He's Meredith there. Do you understand that people are celebrating Christmas right now? Wait, what? Christmas? Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Ah, is it Christmas already? Gosh, I, I totally missed that. I've employed a couple of old nighters. I'm, uh, I'm gonna splash some water on my face. Sorry again, Mr. Weiss. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Merry Christmas. Everything okay, honey? All fine, dear. Just someone who doesn't understand the spirit of Christmas. Uh, never mind. Beth, you were saying... Uh, I wasn't, actually. But I was looking for a way to say this, and now's as good a time as any, I suppose. My dear friends, I am leaving Providence Oaks. <gasps> what? You're what? What's that, dear? Uh, are you serious? Well, before we move on to the sad part, let me first tell you the good part. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be a grandmother. Oh, Beth, that is amazing. Well, I'll be. Whose mother? I, I mean, <laughs> congratulations. Yes, my son Daniel and his wife are expecting. Isn't that wonderful? But... And here's the proverbial kicker. You may remember that they moved to Savannah, Georgia a few years ago. So if you put two and two together... You're moving away to be with them. That's great, Beth. I'm so happy for you. That is marvelous, Beth. Congratulations. I wish you and your family all the happiness in the world. But I'll miss you something terrible. We all will. But we have to toast to the good news. Thomas, go pour us some brandy and I'll get the pie. Oh, Thomas, would you have any antacid? That eggnog is starting to stir up something indiscreet. Yeah, on it. Now, let's celebrate this wonderful evening, ladies. Here's to a lovely old Christmas spent with good friends. Here, 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 here. here, here. Hey, Thomas. Did you see the game last night? Morning, Frank. Uh, nope. We had our Christmas dinner. What happened? The Celtics were up by 25 in the third quarter, but they still lost the game <laughs> in double overtime. Wow. I thought the Celtics had a great team. They do, and I'm still betting on them to win it all this season. But betting against them sure paid off last night. I'm not sure that's a good idea, Frank. Ha, <laughs> Thomas. We'll see. Have a good one today. Hey there. Looks like Santa's a little late this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for not being a good boy, Robert Harris. Let me try to make it up to you. Take that heavy load off your hands. Uh, that must be the fire pit I ordered. Now I can finally go ice fishing without freezing at the same time. <sighs> ice fishing? I thought there'd be no more fishing until spring. So, I could use someone else to talk to. Not that Bert talks that much. <laughs> How about it? Tomorrow evening. How about not in a million years? Amazing. What a miserable combo. Just delivered a fire pit. It won't be that cold. Thanks for the invitation, but I prefer the fireplace in my living room. Suit yourself, couch potato. Hey, did you have a nice Christmas, by the way? I've had better. My daughter couldn't make it. Uh, sorry to hear that. It stop jumping. Right? I need to assemble this baby. See you around, Thomas. Whoa, looks like you're having some car trouble. 
Yeah, uh, just a second, my good man. Gabriel, can you figure out what's wrong with this blasted vehicle? Give me some good news here. I mean, I'm not really a car mechanic, Mr. Price. But I know the smoke isn't a good sign. <laughs> no duh, Einstein. Say, hey, Mr. Mailman, what's your story? I'm just here to deliver a package, sir. Oh, is it for me? And by any chance, would there be a fully functional car in that package? No, sorry. It's for the motel. Well, then what do I care? What's taking Elsa so damn long? Gabe, if you don't know what you're doing, then why on God's green earth are you fiddling around with that engine? Just thought I'd pop up in the hood, Mr. Price. What with the smoke and all? <laughs> it needs to vent. Needs to vent, huh? Hmm. Never have I felt more like a busted car engine. God! I'm dying in this podunk country ass town. Bunch of freaking yokels. So, hey there. I see you've already had the privilege of the full Connor Price experience. <laughs> Quite the experience it was. <laughs> well worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor can be a bit much. Anyway, I'm Ilsa Richter, local TV segment producer turned car problem solver. And that sporting young man over there is Gabriel Serrano, local TV sound guy turned amateur mechanic. Emphasis on amateur. Hey, I never claimed to know anything about cars. Just because I used to be a studio tech, Mr. Price put me on engine duty. Anyway, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Weiss. Uh, local mail carrier turned local TV reporter's punching bag? <laughs> well, what I came to tell that local TV reporter turned mailbag puncher, I called a garage a couple miles down the road. They're on their way right now. That's great, Ilsa. You're an even better car problem solver than you are a segment producer. Flattery will get you everywhere, Gabe. Ah, that must be Ben Young. You're in capable hands. He'll have you fixed up in no time. God, I hope so. We need to get to Melville, and we're already way behind schedule. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Uh, come in here for a second, please. Uh, excuse me. Duty apparently calls. Uh, happy travels. Uh, so, we meet again. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm new here. All of a sudden, I have to check in three people at once who want their own rooms. Separate but close to one another, all equipped with TV VCRs. And, well, long story short, I need to reach Emily Weiss, stat. I'm guessing the local post guy would know where to reach her. Emily's off today. But I'm sure a smart guy like you will figure things out in no time. Uh, oh, thank you ever so much for nothing. God, where am I supposed to see whether room 2 has a VCR installed? I'll just leave the parcel here on the counter. Uh, bye. <laughs> They're already gone. Mighty fast towing there, Ben. Yes, I understand, but Maureen said... Doesn't really matter what Maureen said. I can't help that her orders have been delayed because of the snow. She should have just ordered sooner. It's not like New Year's Eve appeared on the calendar out of nowhere. That's true, but it was only two weeks ago that she decided to throw a celebration at the diner. And once we're sure we can host a proper party for everyone, you are also invited. <sighs> that sounds an awful lot like blackmail to me. Please come to my party, Nancy. But first, hand over a football team supply of cheesy dip, quiche, and sloppy joes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean it that way, and I'm sure you're more than welcome either way. But I have to run now. Bye, Nancy, and hi bye, Thomas. Bye, Kay. <sighs> Marine Hennessy strikes again. P.O. would be a boring place without her. Boring? Drama free might be the word you're looking for. One thing's for sure she does not know how to run a business, always bites off more than she can chew. And now I'm supposed to come to the rescue? Isn't this a great opportunity to generate some extra revenue? With the ridiculous discount she's demanding, it's mostly nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of extra work. Anyway, is that parcel for me? 
You can just put it on the counter. Sure thing, Nancy. Have a great day. Hey, if it isn't Connor Price. Oh, that's him, huh? He's taller than he looks on TV. Let's hope he's in a better mood now. He was really quite rude to me earlier. Wow, sounds like a real jerk. Hello, Mr. Price. Still fuming, I see. Well, hey there. Good to see you, man. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess smoking is a slightly healthier way to blow off steam. Especially since we've had a bit of change of plans. Oh, uh, hi, ma'am. I don't think we've met. Uh, Connor Price, KNW6. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Trail Motel, sir. Better get to work, honey. I'll see you tonight. Okay, what's up with her? Christmas hangover? Uh, you'll have to forgive my wife. She can be a bit protective of me. A protective of you? Oh, I see. You told her about our little kerfuffle earlier. Listen, I'm man enough to admit that it wasn't my finest hour. I'm usually a lot more easygoing. In fact, the Willamette Week once called me one of the most likable faces in local broadcasting. Yeah, that's quite all right. Water under the Bear Creek Bridge, as far as I'm concerned. Uh-huh. Well, when my car isn't breaking down during a tight shooting schedule, I'm a pretty swell guy. Believe me, that's the price guarantee. <laughs> so, has Ben Young managed to fix your van yet? Ha! No, that's the change of plans I was referring to. It turns out we need some parts that the garage doesn't have in stock, so Young's having them shipped over ASAP. But in the meantime, we've decided to stay right here in lovely, picturesque, whatchamacallit, USA. It's Providence Oaks, P.O. for short. Yeah, well, to be honest, all these little villages look pretty much the same to me anyway. See, we're supposed to be shooting some remotes on local end-of-year festivities and such. A grand kickoff to our special series on small-town American life. And it doesn't really make much of a difference if we start here or in freaking Melville. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. A great little place, too. This town has warmth. I like warmth. And so do our viewers, I'm betting. So get ready for your town to be featured in part one of The Oregon Trail. Um, title pending. Might be a little too on the nose. That is the same name as this motel. So I guess it isn't particularly original. My wife works here as a receptionist, but... She's not the one who named it. See, this is what I'm talking about. Real conversations with real Americans, right? But as fun as this is, I should be turning in. The three of us each got our own quaint little room. Mine's non-smoking, unfortunately. Still beats Gabriel's. His doesn't even have a TV. Can you believe it? Yes, I think I can. Anyway, great banter. See you around, my main mailman. Bye. Everybody, there's a suspect situation at the drive-in. Sounds like a job for fries and the hamburger. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, real funny, guys. Okay, Klaus, let's go check it out. <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. Hi, Beth. Got a delivery for you. Uh, where do you want it? Oh, dear, Thomas. I almost didn't see you come in there. I was lost in thought, I suppose. Please just put it on the counter, if you will. Thank you. And thank you again for a lovely Christmas dinner. I had a marvelous time with you all. We loved having you over, Beth, as always. Emily and I had a great time. But about that news of yours... I was afraid it would perhaps put a dampener on the evening, but I was happy we could celebrate together nonetheless. It was quite a shock for both Emily and myself, to be honest. We've known each other for so long, practically part of each other's furniture. Let me guess, I'd be your bookshelf? Yes, especially since all the books on there are gifts from you anyway. 
<laughs> oh, but I will miss you too. As Helen Keller once wrote, so long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. You're like a walking library, Beth. Always a fitting quote. So, haven't you ever thought of moving closer to Meredith over all these years? She is living quite a ways away, right? <sighs> thought about it? Yes. Your news has put things into perspective, I suppose. But leaving here would sure be a big step. M maybe too big, I don't know. Who knows, maybe Meredith will even make it out here one day. <laughs> and there's always the phone, of course. And don't forget the postal service. Quite right you are. Well, I won't keep you any longer, Thomas. I need to sort through this new delivery you've just brought in. And believe you me, that's going to take me a while. <laughs> Maybe it's time for some new glasses. Huh. Until next time, my friend. Up and at them. See you, Beth. Okay, so we still need to check Spanner Dam for the mood shots. According to this, it offers damn fine views, so. Hey, Mr. Mailman, come on over. Talk to us for a sec. Gabe, we don't have time for idle chit chat. He can help us out, Ilsa. No one knows the town like a mailman, right, Mr. Weiss? Hey, Mr. Serrano, Miss Richter. Please, call us Gabe and Ilsa. He can call you Gabe and Ilsa. I prefer Miss Segment Producer Extraordinaire. And you can call me P.O.'s Premier Parcel Provider. Thomas, for short. <laughs> anyway, we're scouting out this beautiful town of yours for our report on Small Town America. It's great, but we could use the inside track. So, any secret spots we're bound to miss, but shouldn't? Well, uh, Mackie's Bait and Tackle. If you want a closer look at our beautiful lake, Bert's Pier can't be beat. But be aware that Bert himself is out of town for the holidays. Oh, hey, Maureen. Now, here's your coffee, folks. Sorry for the delay. <sighs> Fawcett's been acting up again, which should have been fixed yesterday. Oh, you want me to check on it, Miss Hennessy? Oh, now look at you, my knight in woolen armor. Would you, dear? I can take a look. Well, isn't that nice of you? Uh, back of the kitchen, honey. Ashley, someone who does know what he's doing is coming in. Uh, show him where the busted faucet is. A and stay out of his way. Ashley's a sweetheart, but when it comes to fixing things, <laughs> that boy is all thumbs. See, this is what the segment should be. Interacting with the townsfolk, helping out. I love it. Oh, such a nice fellow. Yeah, you're in good hands, Maureen. Gabriel may look and act like a naive little pup, but he can fix anything. Well, except for our van. But other than that... Oh, is that a fact? Well, in that case, I can think of a few more things he could fix around here, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Maureen, there's a lady present. Hmm. Uh, let me just go check him out. Uh, check on him, I mean. <laughs> so, anyway. So? Oh, uh, wait. You had the Connor Price experience the other day. Have you recovered yet? <laughs> I actually encountered him outside the motel yesterday evening. He was a lot nicer this time. Really? Oh, did he greet you with, good to see you, man? Yes, how did you know? That's his go-to when he's forgotten your name. It's good to see you, man, for guys, and hey, lady, for gals. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't worry about it, though. He called me Lisa for the better part of a year. Connor's a lot. But I guess after this week, I can update my resume with not just segment producer and car problem solver, but also Connor Price Wrangler. It must be a little weird being stuck in a strange town with two colleagues. 
guys you probably don't even know that well. I know I wouldn't last a day in the same situation with my colleague Frank, and he's a friend. <laughs> it does take some adjusting, but Gabe's a big old puppy dog at least. He's as uncomplicated as Connor is complicated, so that's a welcome antidote. Well now, sounds like someone is getting a little warm under the collar for our Gabriel. Just between you and me, honey, I have a hunch that feeling is more than mutual. <laughs> Maureen, you shouldn't startle people like that. All I know is, I just spent five minutes with our knight in the kitchen, and during that time, he mentioned Ilsa about 12 times. Really? Well, uh... Faucet's all better now, Mo. And we should be hitting the road right about now. Right. Thanks, Maureen. Nice talking to you, Thomas. Bye now, folks. Be sure to check in again soon, you hear? Ha! Huh. These TV folks sure know how to liven things up, don't they? Indeed, Maureen. And you haven't even met the main event, Connor Price. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, you know about my little New Year's Eve shindig, right? I'm counting on you and Emily. We'll party like it's 1986. Because it will be. <laughs> of course we'll be there. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Let's get back to it. See you, Mo. Bye now. Ah, look who's here. Hey, Thomas. Yeah, I needed to take care of some stuff. Hardly any customers at the post office anyway. I don't know, Frank. What if there's someone who needs to send something urgent? If it's really urgent, I'll drive it over to the distribution center myself. They know they can count on me. If you say so, Frank. It's none of my business. That big sucker you're carrying is for me, huh? Right on time. It's all coming together. Hey, Thomas, you can keep a little secret, right? Of course, Frank. Great. It's not a big deal in any case. A buddy of mine was able to get his hands on some premium quality fireworks. I'm selling them with a nice profit. And anything I can't sell, well, let's just say you want to be outside Moe's Diner when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's Eve. Frank. That sounds illegal and dangerous. I'm going to leave now and pretend we never had this conversation. Okay, Thomas, fair enough. See you at the office. And I hope you still enjoy the show. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, uh, very good evening. A am I talking to Mrs. Uh, Emily Weiss? Yes, sir, that would be me. Ah, fantastic. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, my name is, uh, Christian Carmichael, and I represent Fly Into Florida. Oh, um, uh, hi there. I, I have great news for you, Mrs. Weiss. It's been a while, but, uh, do you perhaps remember entering into our Fly Into Florida sweepstakes? Um, now that you mention it, I think so. Yeah. Was that the one on the back of the juice carton? That's the one. And I am more than happy to tell you that you are the winner of the grand prize. The grand prize? Wow, uh, fantastic. Um, I'm afraid I've forgotten what it was. Could you refresh my memory a little bit? Uh, uh no problem, Mrs. Weiss. Uh, you have won a two-week trip to Florida. For two. Wow. Fl Florida? Really? I won? I have never won anything in my life. Uh, hold on. I need to tell my husband. Honey, we won. I'm talking to a gentleman from Fly into Florida. And he says we've won a two week holiday for two. Tell him he's dreaming. It's probably a timeshare scam. What? No, that can't be. I did enter that contest. D Hold on. Um, my husband is unsure if this is really true. I mean, you do hear a lot about phone scams these days. Uh, we'll do our absolute best to take away all your concerns. You've got plenty of time to let it all sink in. Uh, next, we'll be sending you an extra special envelope. It will contain a confirmation letter, airline tickets, hotel tickets, and I totally forgot to say this earlier, a $500 check covering any additional expenses. Oh, wow. I can't believe this is happening. 
Well, it most definitely is, Mrs. Weiss. And we'll be making sure you both have the time of your life. There's one thing I must stress. The dates can't be altered. So if you have plans for the first two weeks of September, this would be a great moment to change them. And I hope this answers all of your questions for now. Congratulations on winning. And we look forward to seeing you fly into Florida. Thank you. Bye. I, I think I need to sit down for a moment. Oh, Florida. Come sit next to me. A minute? Sure, Frank. What's up? Listen, I just got a heads up from one of my buddies at HQ. He said Walter Morgan left for P.O. with tires screeching. I, I need to lay low for a while. If you see him, you haven't seen me, okay? Gotcha, Frank. Don't worry about him. Holy crap! Morgan's on the premises! I'm not here. Good morning, Mr. Weiss. Uh, good morning, Mr. Morning. I'm looking for Frank. Could you tell me where he is, please? Uh, Frank? Frank Coleman? Uh, haven't seen him here. And where is he, if he's not here? He's probably out delivering. Could be anywhere. Hmm. I guess I'll have to be patient, then. We received a report that a man with a mustache dressed in a light blue shirt was offering illegal fireworks to people in the postal office parking lot. If that man is Frank, and I'm sure it is, then that's strike three for Mr. Coleman. Please tell him I'm looking for him. Have a good day. Is he gone? Yes, Frank. Holy crap, that was a close call. Thanks so much, Thomas. I guess Frank Coleman's going into hiding for a while. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea, Frank. See you Sunday evening. I guess we'll have to play poker with the curtains closed. Yet another heavy package for you, Ben. Let me take that off your hands, Thomas. You know I feel guilty enough as it is. Having you lug around those car parts week in and week out? That's the job, Ben. Neither snow nor rain nor heavy packages. Stay these, these couriers, couriers from, from the, the swift, swift completion, completion of their, of their appointed, appointed rounds. rounds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, though. If you don't mind me saying... You're getting up there. Ever think of hanging up the old coat and bag? Uh, not until recently, but recently? Yeah. Good for you. Think about it some more would be my advice. Son of a gun. Is the engine parts for the news van? Didn't expect them to come in so soon. No, oh, that's great. Now they'll be able to roam around P.O. for their report. Yep. With any luck, that thing will be up and running before the end of the day. Hey, don't rush it, Ben. Remember, you're getting up there yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now get going, you old timer. Ah, there you are. Could you bring this box over to the diner? And if they ask, there's no discount. Sure, why not? Thanks. And remember, no discount. Roger that. Hi, Thomas. Oh, please tell me that's a big box full of snacks from the general store. This is a big box full of snacks from the general store, but without a discount on what's inside. No discount? Is Nancy Carlisle really trying to charge me full price for snacks that are about to go past their expiration dates? <laughs> Yikes, that would be pretty sad. I can't believe people could be like that. That heartless creature. Maureen, easy now. She just drives a hard bargain. Pardon my French, Thomas, but she always manages to drive me up a wall. I'll stop bothering you now. I'll think of something, don't you worry. Hello, Thomas. 
Mm, hi there, Beth. What brings you here? I saw you arrive just now, so I decided to venture across the road with a minor request. Sure thing. What can I do you for? It's just one small thing, I promise, and... Well, I suppose you can see what it is. A first gift to the little one, you see, since Christmas in Georgia fell through. It just needs an address, and I'm not sure where to put it. Could I leave this with you so you could make sure it gets where it needs to go? I have the information right here on an old envelope. It's the return address in the top corner. Of course, Beth. I can understand that labeling a package like this can seem daunting. Bears will do that to you. <laughs> You're a real gentleman, Thomas. Thank you. I have a stack of returned holiday gifts that need sorting before I close. I've handled many a strange parcel in my day. Not to worry. I'll take care of it. Thank you, Thomas. Truly. I'll get the postage to you later, I promise. Oh, and please tell Emily I have a great idea for this Sunday's girls' night. It's a surprise. Bye now! <laughs> sure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hello? Hi, Meredith! It's us. Your dad is standing right next to me. Hiya. Hi! Shouldn't you two be at Moe's right now? <laughs> yeah, we're about to jump in the car, but we wanted to share some exciting news with you. Oh, uh, first things first, though. How was your Christmas? Well, I worked. <laughs> and Tess and I made a Christmas meal you probably won't ever find in a cookbook. But we had a lovely evening. Thanks, Mom. Can I get the exciting news now, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your dad and I will fly into Florida this September. I want a sweepstakes. Get out of here. Wow, that's so awesome, Mom. Florida in September. <laughs> Beats the P.O. weather, huh? Oh, sure does. Dad, are you excited as well? I sure am. Aren't you worried about flying there? Last time you came to visit... It took a few hours for that green tinge to leave your face. <laughs> oh, Meredith, don't make it worse than it was. Fine, fine. Maybe he just boozed too much on the plane. Have you checked if the flight includes free cocktails? Best bring your flask, Dad, just in case. <laughs> if you were here for Christmas, you might have gotten one from Santa. Oh, well. I may not have been there, but at least my boss called to interrupt your dinner. Sorry about that, by the way. Rest assured, he was appropriately ashamed. <sighs> we all make mistakes, Meredith. Some of us just more than others. <laughs> I can't disagree there. Oh, hey, you two shouldn't keep Maureen waiting. <laughs> You're right about that. Your dad will go and get the car warmed up, right, honey? That's my cue. Bye, Em. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Have fun tonight. Thanks for getting the car all toasty for us, honey. You're very welcome, dear. It's my pleasure. <sighs> We've been doing this for decades now. And I've never stopped looking forward to spending my Saturday evening here with you. Uh, decades? Shh, don't say that out loud. It makes me feel old. <laughs> okay, okay. But we're not young anymore. Can I say that? Good evening, you two beautiful people. Ready to order? Or should I just write down pancakes for lovely Emily and a T-bone steak for Big Thomas here? Oh, Maureen, your intuition never ceases to amaze me. It sure is pancake time for me again. Hold your horses, Maureen. I think I might have something else. I'll have pancakes, too. You got it. Be right back, folks. Ashley, it's pancake time! <laughs> this will never get old. But Beth making surprise plans and this Florida trip landing in our lap got me thinking a little bit. If we're getting close to being able to do whatever we feel like doing, does that mean we should stay in P.O. forever? Yeah, of course. I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's also very hard for me to imagine. But it snuck into my mind and it doesn't seem to be sneaking out. And it's not like your arthritis will stop acting up in weather like this. Let's talk about it some other time, honey. 
We've got months and months to think it over. Oh, wasn't it nice the way Meredith reacted to the news? Although I'm sure she's a little envious. <laughs> yeah. When's the last time she had a few days off and left the big smoke? Okay, folks, while Ashley's busy in the kitchen, it's time to fill Moe in on a few details. A little birdie told me you two were off somewhere fancy. <laughs> Maureen, I was planning on telling you and the girls all about it tomorrow evening. But I'm sure you've also heard it's Florida in September. Florida in September. Oh, imagine that. Oh, I'm so happy for you too. Thanks, Maureen. H have you ever been to Florida? Are you offering your ticket to me? Oh, Thomas, that's so nice of you. Nice try, Maureen. Nice try. But the only one sitting next to me on that plane is my man. Are you totally sure about that, though? I heard that a certain Walter Morgan will probably not be very lenient with holiday requests from the postal office employees. <laughs> Morgan. His bark is always worse than his bite. If Walter Morgan gets in the way of that, I'll get in his way. I don't think I trust Ashley run away, but I'm uh, sorry. Oh, that means dinner's almost ready. Be right back, folks. See, things like this, they bother me sometimes. Maureen's a sweetheart, but it's almost impossible to have a private life here. That sure is true. But you take the good with the bad, and the bad with the good. I kind of like knowing everyone. I guess you're right about that. Maybe it's the stress of those 60-hour work weeks talking. Oh, Maureen's heading this way again. Let's just enjoy our lovely dinner together, shall we? We shall. I could eat a horse. Look alive, folks. Two plates of the good stuff. Oh, Thomas, my dear, sweet husband. The one and only. Uh, no autographs. Mm, the sweetest man alive. Always prepared to help out anyone who asks for a favor, even on his Sunday off. Okay, Em. What needs doing? The motel called, and, well, the TV crew would very much like to rent some movies from the Flick Shack today. But I couldn't just let poor little Angie ferry them over in this weather, so... So you promised them I'd do it? Bingo! Would you, dear? Pretty please. Of course, Em. You've been so busy lately. It'll be my pleasure. Oh, thank you so much, darling. Tell you what, I'll make some extra tasty snacks for your poker night tonight. How's that? <laughs> it's a deal. Thomas Weiss says I live and breathe. What in tarnation are you doing out and about in the mail truck on a Sunday? The goose needed to stretch its legs. <laughs> or wings. The goose is the mail truck, by the way. Lori Young named it that. <laughs> no, but seriously. You've come to pick up some movies for the KNW6 crew, right? Oh, what gave it away? Your wife called ahead. <sighs> yeah. The old ball and chain has me running errands on my day off. <laughs> but first things first. So, what's the hot gossip on these out-of-towners? Well, there's Gabriel Serrano. He's the sound guy. Nice guy, full of vim and vigor. Sounds delightful. What about the rest? Ilsa Richter is their producer. Obviously, she's the brains of the outfit. Mm-hmm. Her I've met came into the store yesterday asking about P.O. and whether I liked it here. Cute as a button, that one. And only in town for a couple days. Perfect for a girl on the rebound. <laughs> Shame she's into men. One in particular. Are you sure? How do you figure? The way her eyes lit up when she mentioned that colleague of hers, Gabriel. Trust me, a girl knows. So anyway, let's get down to brass tacks. According to Emily, our intrepid reporters have two rooms equipped with VCRs between them. One for Connor Price, KNW6, and one for Ilsa Richter. <laughs> Great. I know what we should get for Connor. Network. Because he's mad as hell and he won't take it anymore. <laughs> Great idea. 
But Connor's already made his pick. Octopussy. It says it's James Bond's all-time high. I guess they forgot about that time you went to the moon. Fine by me. And what did Ilsa choose? That's where we come in. <laughs> See, she wants us to pick the movie she'll be watching with her colleague, Gabriel. Thomas, she wants us to pick the movie she'll be watching with Gabriel. Uh, your putting emphasis on seemingly random words has not helped me grasp what you're suggesting. No, I think you get it. We can guide Cupid's arrows in the right direction, if you know what I mean. By picking a lovey-dovey movie. After all, tis the season. Uh, to be jolly? What does that have to do with anything? You and Emily are regular customers, so you know what I have available. So, which film will it be? What about Scarface? I know I enjoyed that one. Thomas, that's not a romantic movie. Gosh! I feel uncomfortable playing matchmaker. Let these crazy kids figure it out on their own. I suppose you're right. It was fun while it lasted anyway. Uh, anyway, I'd best be on my way getting these to the motel. Yeah, thanks for doing this, Thomas. My car, much like myself, is not built for snow. Say hi to Emily. Will do. Bye, Angie. Special delivery! Hmm? Uh, movies from the Flick Shack. Right. Well, great news. You get to play belated Santa yourself. Room six for Richter. Thank you. Right. I will. Good day. A movie delivery for segment producer Ilsa Richter. Yes? Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Price. I thought this was Ilsa's room. Uh, no, that's room nine, uh, but think nothing of it, my guy. Ooh, you got me my Bond movie. <laughs> yes, sir. Apparently it's James Bond's all-time high. Love it. You know, more's an even better 007 than Connery. He just oozes that classy British wit. Thank you so much. Ta-da! Ta-da! Pow! A movie delivery for Ilsa Richter. Yay! Good to see you, Thomas. So, what movie did you and Angie pick for me and Gabe? Here you go. Scarface. Heard a lot about this one. Should be exciting. It's a heck of a ride. Enjoy. Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of saying hello to my little friend, on your way out, could you give a quick knock on Gabe's door, just so he'll know it's movie time? It's room number two. Will do. Great. See ya. Gabriel Serrano, the lady in room number nine humbly requests your presence for an evening of home cinema. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. I'll be right over. My work here is done. Okay, Ben. Question for you. Do you have that ace or not? You don't have to say yes or no. Just say anything. All I need to hear is one word from you. To know if you're bluffing. Nothing? Not even a twitch or a blink? Alright, I'll do the talking. I'm all in. Call. And he just instantly calls me. Great. I don't even need to see your hand. Well played, sir. Thanks, Jack. You got unlucky there. I don't know. I just don't have the patience for poker. You know, reading a poker book ain't gonna change that. Hey, Thomas? Why are the curtains closed, by the way? Last time I checked, home games are legal. <laughs> it's probably better if Frank answers that question. <laughs> I sure can. Walter Morgan's on my tail. Someone snitched on me, and now I need to lay low until I have a good enough alibi. Morgan again? What'd you do, Frank? I hope you didn't put ladies' underwear in his briefcase again. And please tell me you stopped putting dead rats in his exhaust. Ha! <laughs> the classics. No, I didn't prank him at all this time. He's just out to get me. 
All I did was sell fireworks to someone. He said something about that being my third strike. I might actually lose my job, fellas. Don't you think he's bluffing, Frank? I'm afraid not, Thomas. I'm not gonna call his bluff in any case. I just need a plan. Mm, I'm guessing they don't have any photographic evidence. Pictures of you selling these fireworks? Just that there's a guy fitting my description. What are you getting at? <laughs> I might have a little plan. But let's first play a few more hands. I'm down almost 30 bucks. One sec, Jack. Frank, I'm curious. We know Walter Morgan has a few reasons to dislike you, but why do you dislike him? Hmm, I could tell you why, but it's not a pretty tale. And it better not leave this room, uh, kitchen. Sure, Frank. My lips are sealed, for once. Frank, I'm not sure if I can keep another secret for you. I'll just go to the John. Fair enough, Thomas. I can't blame you. All right, so this one time back in the summer of 69, it was before I started working in P.O. There were a couple of pesky stray dogs wandering around HQ. I say pesky, but they never really hurt anyone. Just got a little excited if you walked past them eating a sandwich or whatever. Can't blame them, huh? They were hungry, even though I fed them every now and then. Morgan found out, of course, and after one complaint too many, he took matters into his own hands. Or should I say, feet. He lured a couple of them behind his car, and before I knew what was going on, it was too late. I heard a loud and gut-wrenching howl. I saw two dogs run away, and Smokey, my favorite one, limped after them. It's the last time I ever saw those sweet dogs. Then Walter Morgan looked me straight in the eye with a smug grin on his face. And he said, this is how you do a proper job, Frank. I can still see that grin when I close my eyes. Okay, that does it. Walter Morgan is now on my eternal shit list. And I'll make sure the rest of P.O. knows about it. What a despicable human being. I can't believe he did that. Well, ha, he didn't. I was joking, of course. I don't really have a good reason for disliking Walter Morgan. That boring old pencil pusher just rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Frank, you had us good! Did I miss something? <laughs> you sure did, but I'll tell you about it another time. Okay, folks, ante up. Here we go again. Over here. Hey, Frank. Thanks for filling up the dumpster. <laughs> I wish that was all I was doing here. I'm trying to stay out of sight. Looks like Morgan will be at the post office all day. Listen up. Jack and I cooked up a little plan. I'm sure Morgan will be gone soon. But I gotta get out of here now. You haven't seen me. Okay, are we rolling? We're rolling. We're rolling. Okay, let's get this in one. I'm freezing my ass off. <clears throat> when Chekhov saw the long winter, he saw a winter bleak and dark and bereft of hope. Yet we know that winter is just another step in the cycle of life. In the summer months, this lake is bustling with activity. As the local fishermen cast their rods, the tourists plunk down hard-earned cash to rent a boat and spend a delightful sun-soaked day on the water. Not so during this particularly harsh winter, however. Now the watery heart of Providence Oaks finds itself completely frozen over. No, uh, that won't do as an analogy because now we're sort of implying that residents have grown cold-hearted during the winter. Doesn't work, doesn't scan. Yeah, and um, what was with that Chekhov stuff? I don't get it. Chekhov? Like from Star Trek? All right, all right. Let's try something else. Wait, hey. Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. How's it going? Hi, Mr. Price. Uh, did you enjoy the movie last night? Uh-huh. Hey, listen, how about I ask you a couple of questions on camera? Just simple stuff about the town. Sure, I'd be happy to. Great. Just uh, move over here. 
Are we both in the shot? Yeah, that's fine. This'll be great. The lake has a backdrop. Perfect. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. This is... His name is Thomas Weiss. I knew that. Thomas and I go way back. <clears throat> As the local mailman for truly countless years, Thomas Weiss knows Providence Oaks like he knows the back of his own hand. So, Mr. Weiss, how would you characterize this small, cold town and its warm, warm inhabitants? Oh boy, that's a tough one. In the eons I've been the local mailman, I've learned one thing. Providence Oaks cannot be summed up in a single soundbite. But one thing's for certain. When the low winter sun hits that shimmering water just right, you realize this is the most beautiful place imaginable. And wherever you are, or whatever you face, this is home. And cut. Ah, oh, that's so sweet, Thomas Weiss. Completely unusable. But sweet, I know I've got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, that went well, kind of. Now, let's scout out the establishing shots at the far end of the pier. Let's go, Connor. Aye, aye, Captain. Gabe, you can take five. My advice would be to take those five in the van, to reduce the risk of any further ass-freezing-off incidents. Noted. Thanks, Elsa. Uh, Mr. Weiss, uh, Thomas, sir? Hi, Gabriel. What's up? Uh, just that, well, we'll be ringing in the new year right here in Providence Oaks. So... My mom is shipping over my tuxedo. <laughs> Can you make sure it arrives okay? She says she clearly marked the package Serrano Room 2. Oh, of course. Mailman's promise. Any particular reason you want to look your best for New Year's? <laughs> yeah, maybe. There is something else I wanted to ask you about. I guess I'm curious. How did you, like, woo your wife? Uh, it's pretty simple and cliched. Uh, she's my high school sweetheart. Uh, I took her to the fairy tale dance. We snuck off to smooch under the bleachers. And the rest is ancient history. Uh, but I'm guessing that doesn't help you with what you really want to know. You want to know if you have a shot with Ilsa. Shh, keep it down! Don't mention her name! <laughs> but yeah terrible at that kind of stuff. It's just, you seem like a wise man, wise man. <laughs> I'd really appreciate your advice. Well, okay then. My advice is to go for it. You like her, a lot, and it's pretty obvious that the feeling's mutual. Wow. And is that your definitive judgment? Absolutely. That's the best I can do. All done. Hey. What are you two schmoozing about? A mailman never tells. Excellent. Now start the engine, Gabriel. We're rolling out pronto. Man alive, it's cold today. On it, Mr. Price. Thanks, Thomas. You've been a huge help. So, take good care of that tux, yeah? Will do. Bye, folks. Hi there, ladies. Hi, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Got a delivery for the diner, Kay. Great. Not from the general store, I see? Don't think so. It seems way too heavy to be full of hot air. <laughs> uh, oh well. Okay, so before I leave, we had this awesome girls' night yesterday thanks to Beth. It was hilarious! When I first saw where we were going, my brain went, oh my god. And when the guy showed us what we were going to do, my brain went, oh my god! And when we started, it was so... Yuck, but also so cool, you know? I've never done anything like that before, and I love that I got a chance to find out. But then again, I doubt that I will ever try it again. <laughs> ah, yes, the girls' night. What did you end up doing? We made haggis. You made what -us? I said haggis. It's a Scottish dish made from a sheep's liver, lungs, heart, and suet, all stuffed into a sheep's stomach. It's this fascinating traditional gourmet staple stemming from the 15th century, would you believe? Poems have been written about it. Ugh, that sounds disgusting. 
I'm glad we mostly had processed foods at poker night. Well, I say, Thomas, don't be a Philistine. <laughs> it was so gross. I have nightmares about zombie sheep for weeks. Bleh. Okay, hate to leave you two, but I really have to sort out this delivery ASAP. A marine will go bananas. Talk soon. Thanks again for the great evening, Beth. Bye. Bye, Kay. Well, now, I really should get back to the grind as well. Those New Year's price reductions aren't going to fix themselves. Okay, rather you than me. See you soon. All right, see you soon, Thomas. Oh, Thomas, hello there. Could you be a sweetheart and bring that over to me? Uh, of course. Oh, careful now. Robert cleared most of the snow, but it's still a bit slippery. Thank you so much. If only I still had the balance and agility of my feline friends. Oh, and good day to you, of course. <laughs> uh, good day to you too, Mildred. And Genevieve? Thomas, honestly. This isn't Genevieve. It's Mortimer. They look nothing alike. Isn't that right, Mortimer? <coughs> oh, pardon me. I can't quite keep track of all your cats. Well, I do have a lot of them. But not quite as many as there are streets in Providence Oaks. And you can keep those apart. So, what do you have for me today, Thomas? Just a letter. Let's see. Hmm. This sounds interesting. Apparently, I need to make a few copies of this letter, and if you send this letter along with five dollars to the first six people on this list, your name will be added to the bottom. Soon enough, your name will rise to the top, then many people will send you five dollars. You will earn lots of money with one small investment. Oh, what a great idea! What do you think, Mortimer? Knock yourself out. You can use the copy machine at the post office if you like. Hmm, thirty dollars is quite a bit of money. I'll think about it. You do that, Mildred. See you at Moe's tomorrow night? Probably. Bye, dear. Hey, Thomas. Have you seen Jack? Yep. Yesterday night in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I kind of need him now. I'm a sitting duck right now. I'm toast if Morgan suddenly shows up. Yikes. Maybe I can help out? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Sorry for interrupting your conversation. Mr. Coleman. I see you've managed to be present at the job position you're currently holding. I think it's time you and I had a little chat inside the office. Mr. Morgan, it's so good to see you again. A little chat sounds uh, wonderful. But I'm afraid there's an extremely urgent parcel I have to deliver right now. So stay put and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. You can stay right here, Frank. I'm sure Mr. Weiss would be happy to deliver that package for you. Right? Thomas? Sure, Mr. Morgan. I just finished my round, so it's not a bother. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, sir? Hi. Hello. I, I heard you were looking for a guy in a light blue shirt with a mustache to purchase illegal fireworks in the parking lot of the post office? Well, you found him. Illegal fireworks? Who do you think I am? Sir, you don't have to keep your guard up. Frank and Thomas here both know me very well, and... I'm sure they won't tell a soul about what you're doing right now. So, what will it be? I've got rockets, Roman candles, fountains, sparklers. I even have barrages that'll give you a fireworks extravaganza that you won't ever forget. I think there must be a misunderstanding here. Please, don't put Mr. Morgan in this position. If people walk by and see this, they, they might snitch on him and get him into trouble. He could even lose his job over this. Yeah, why don't you go inside so you can do your dealings without all these prying eyes around? I'll tell you what will happen now. I'm going to get in my car, start the engine, drive home, 
and pretend I did not just spend three days in Providence Oaks for absolutely nothing. Sir, if you take a left at the deer statue, you'll eventually pass my barn, and I can feel your trunk there in just one minute. Do you have cash on hand? Gentlemen, I'll be back next year. Frank Coleman, your luck will run out one day. I wouldn't bet on it. Tally-ho, Morgan! Is Morgan really going to believe Jack was the one offering fireworks? That mustache wasn't very convincing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We turned up the heat on him and he chickened out. Thanks, guys. I owe you one. Uh, hello? Evening, Thomas. It's Maureen. Oh, hi, Maureen. Uh, if you're looking for Emily, she's at the motel right now. I, I was actually looking for you, Thomas. I don't know what to do with this Nancy situation. I get so worked up just thinking about it. And that usually gets in the way of doing the right thing, you know? I need to talk to someone who's a bit more emotionally detached from the situation. Mm. How can I help you, Maureen? Simply put, I don't know if I should give in to that Nancy Carlisle and her overpriced snacks, or tell that woman to take a hike. But then we'll end up with a lackluster New Year's Eve party. The horror of a New Year's Eve party without a decent snack selection. That's not a difficult choice for me. So you're saying I should go against all my principles just because of some snacks? Yes, snacks all the way. They may be a bit pricey, but who cares when everyone's having a grand old time? Hmm. I think you're on to something there, Thomas. I'm not yet totally sure what I'm gonna do, but at least my mind's at ease now. Thanks for lending me your ear. And advice. You're a doll. <laughs> it, it takes one to know one, Maureen. I hate to admit it, Klaus, but if it wasn't for you, I would have been a goner. Ha! <laughs> you can't say that about the other guy. <laughs> you betcha! You made a mess, man! Blood and guts everywhere! It's not the first time I've made Schweinbraten without cooking! Ha <laughs> ha! Thomas! It's good to see you. Thanks again for the little chat we had yesterday evening. Don't mention it, Maureen. I was glad to help. I think I've made the right decision. But I guess some situations don't have a perfect solution. You'll find out tonight, Thomas. We'll have a grand old time regardless. Oh, hey, Thomas. We're about to do a little interview, but you're welcome to listen in. Mr. Price, you know Thomas Weiss, don't you? Sure do. You're resident mailman, am I right? Good to see you, man. Hi, guys. Uh, don't mind me. I'll just be a fly on the wall here. That was Open Sky by Velvet Moon, one of my favorites. Folks, we have a special treat for you today, because I have a guest here at the Reynolds studio. You know that happens from time to time, but today it's a bona fide big shot. None other than KNW6's own newsman extraordinaire, Mr. Connor Price! Thanks for having me, Jack. Always nice to talk to a fellow broadcaster. Coming up on our 10th anniversary, Mr. Price. But you've been at KNW6 for longer than that, no? Yeah, yeah, it's been... Gosh, <laughs> can you believe I started there way back in 66? As a segment producer on Portland Rise and Shine. Still remember the title of my first item, too. Is Poplin Still Poppin? That's a great title. And yet, this is the first time you've come to Providence Oaks. Uh, first time staying a while, at any rate. Uh, so, Mr. Reynolds, how would you describe this town? Hmm, well, I'd say it's... Hey, 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 wait a minute. Who's interviewing who here? I'll ask the questions, thank you very much. <laughs> Apologies, my friend. Just can't help myself always chasing the story, me. It's the commitment I've made to our viewers. 
the price guarantee. So, what stories are you chasing here in P.O.? Oh, you know, just trying to capture the old couleur locale. I must say, the people here are very friendly, and I hope the feeling's mutual. Right, Thomas? <laughs> That's Thomas the mailman over there. But never mind, he's not miked. <laughs> yes, and no, uh, I'm not. Hmm, you don't say. Because we happen to have a little section called P.O. Positive or Pet P. You might have heard of it? Can't say I have, but I do like the alliteration. Hmm. Well, Lucinda Boyle called in a pet peeve yesterday, saying you were quite rude to her when she asked you for an autograph. Uh, well, I'm sure that was a misunderstanding. Uh, see, I must have been on a really tight schedule, because otherwise I'd do anything for a fan. That's the price guarantee, right? Sure. Anyway, we'll be back with Connor Price, KNW Six Star Reporter, right after this. What the hell, Jack? Ambushing me like that live on air? Relax, just joshing you a little. But I'll let you plug the heck out of this Oregon Trail thing you're filming. How's that? We'll make sure everyone in town fully cooperates with your crew in the home stretch. Uh huh. Well, speaking of the home stretch, I better get back to my job as a serious broadcaster. It's been real, pal. Can you believe this guy? Sheesh. Someone in broadcasting being slightly obnoxious? Unheard of. Huh. That's the thanks I get for stopping by amateur hour. Ha <laughs> uh, ha Sorry you had to witness that, Thomas. Made for good radio, though. While it lasted, anyway. I'll see you at most tonight, yeah? You don't want to miss what Frank's been cooking up. Can't wait. See you there. Knock, knock. Hmm, he's not in. I should probably leave it with Ilsa then. Room nine. Knock, knock. Hi, Thomas. Oh, is that Gabriel's tux? Signed, sealed, delivered. That's the wise guarantee. <laughs> okay, I'll take care of it. Thanks. Uh, right then, I'll... I'm feeling fine, I'm feeling strong, it won't be long. Ooh, when I use my witchcraft, ooh, ooh, ooh. When I use my witchcraft, ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah. Well... Great. So... <laughs> <laughs> See you tonight at the diner. Oh, and... Thank you. My pleasure, Ilsa. Hello? Hi, Meredith. It's the Weiss family again. We wanted to wish you a happy new year before we're going to Moe's. Hey, thanks. We've got a little over an hour left here before it's 1986. You'll watch out for those fireworks, won't you? They're so unpredictable. I will. I'll probably stay inside anyways. We've got four more hours to go, but Happy New Year! <laughs> I'd rather be early than late. Uh, are you going anywhere to celebrate? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. We're all a bit drained after making the deadline. Some guys from the office were going to do a Yi'ar Kung Fu tournament, but I didn't feel like it. A Kung Fu tournament? On New Year's Eve? <laughs> yes, Mom, it's a video game. But Tess and I are gonna watch Trading Places instead at my place. I think that New Year's Eve is overrated anyway. People seem to think it must be the best night of the year, but all you usually get is a lot of drama and a solid hangover. My New Year's resolution was not to make a big deal out of New Year's Eve anymore. And it looks like I'm not gonna break it. <laughs> But uh, don't let that ruin your evening. I totally understand you, Meredith. My best New Year's Eve was actually one I spent all by myself. I don't know why, but that night, I've never felt more at peace. And most parties aren't worth the hangover anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's because you usually forget half of what happened. <laughs> Sorry, Meredith. Your father's memory needs a little grease between the hinges. 
<laughs> like starting the car in time before going to Moe's? <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> okay, guys, I won't hold you up. Have a great evening and a happy new year. Love you. My beautiful people, may I have your attention for half a minute? First of all, welcome to Moe's. We're excited to celebrate the last few moments of 1985 together with you. It was quite an undertaking to host this New Year's Eve party, and a costly one at that. So, if you feel inclined to end the year on a generous note, you know where the tip jar is. We've got snacks and drinks aplenty, so I'm sure that even the grumpiest so-and-so will be able to have a great evening. Thank you all for coming. Cheers. Well, if it isn't my favorite KNW6 news team. In the flesh. Hi, Thomas. Nice tuxedo, Gabriel. Thank you. And thanks for making sure I got it. I put it on right after I got out of that shower. <laughs> he toweled off first. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Champagne for my real friends and real pain for my sham friends. Hi, Connor. So, is the segment on Providence Oaks in the can yet? Almost, my friend. Still have to shoot the countdown to the new year. Hopefully that gives us the ending we need. I've been promised a spectacle. Easy on the alcohol there, Connor. We still need you on camera. Can't have you slurring your words. Slurring my words? Whatever do you mean, Ilsa? Quit fooling, you guys. It's getting close to midnight. Let's set up and get ready. Showtime. Okay, getting into character. See you on the flip side, mailman. Hi, honey. Ugh, there goes that Connor Price. Would you believe the motel had to custom order a blow dryer just for him? He tipped generously, though. Oh, is that Beth sitting over there? Let's join her. Good evening, my dearest of friends. Almost time for Old Lang Syne, eh? Did you know that Auld Lang Syne was written down by Robert Burns in the 18th century? And that he based it on an old Scottish folk song? He wrote it to a different melody than the one we sing today, but I have to say, I do like this version. And it's often sung after a special dinner where haggis is served, would you believe? Honestly, Beth, I don't know how we'll get by without these fascinating facts when you're gone. Well. I will still be selling sets of encyclopedias at the store for a few more months if you need them. I'll cut you a nice deal. <laughs> Only if you'll help load them into my truck. Oh, my friends. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Well, whatever the future brings, this old acquaintance here will be hard-pressed to ever forget you two. <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure we're memorable in a good way. So are you, dear Bethy. And like you said at Christmas dinner, even if the reasons for change are sometimes out of our hands, let's focus on the new beginnings that come along with that. Hmm? And what better time for new beginnings than New Year's Eve? Attention, folks! It's showtime! If you want to see the biggest fireworks show west of the Rocky Mountains, you better be standing outside in about 10 minutes. That's my cue. From a little spark may burst a flame, as Dante once put it. But I need to visit the ladies' room first or I'll turn into a pumpkin. See you outside. <laughs> Isn't she marvelous? I'm so happy for her, but I am going to miss Bethy. So will I. Seeing a parcel addressed to the bookstore always brightened my mood. Hmm. It makes me feel a bit melancholic. Even more than I usually am on New Year's Eve. This odd feeling of looking back and forward at the same time, and... Now I'm doing that over a much longer period than just the coming and going of the year. I know what you mean. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's good to have something to look forward to. And we sure have something to look forward to, don't we? I guess that's what's most important in life. But let's enjoy the here and now instead. Our wise and beautiful daughter just taught us not to demand that this should be the best evening of the year. But we're allowed to try it, right? 
So this is where my speech ends, my dear husband. And now, I need a glass of champagne. I'll drink to that. Uh, and to you. And all the good things the new year will bring us. Maureen, I need champagne. For me and my beautiful wife. You got it, sir. Just grab your glasses and join me in the bottle outside. It's less than a minute now. 20 seconds on go, Mr. Price. Go. And so, 1985 draws to a close. With mere seconds left in the year, I've been told this little lake town will strive to end 85 with a bang. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Holy Toledo! Elsa, are we getting this? Somebody check on Frank! And that sure sounds like a delicious eggnog recipe. <sighs> Hurry up, dear! It's coming up next! Yes, yes, don't get too excited now. It's just a preview, remember? And now, a man with a very special New Year's resolution. And he's going to tell us all about it. Isn't that right, Sybil? Absolutely, Bob. It's none other than our roving reporter, Connor Price. Connor, my dear, where in blazes are you? Well, Sybil, I'm in beautiful Providence Oaks, wishing you and Bob and our viewers a joyful 1986. And as for my New Year's resolution, Bob... Why, it's my very special price guarantee to all of you that I will be sharing gripping tales and intimate portraits from all over Oregon in an all-new series of special reports on small-town America. Part 1 will air tonight at 8, right here on KNW6. And it will be all about the gorgeous little lake town where I was fortunate enough to spend the waning days of 1985. Here, let's take a look at an exclusive sneak peek. Providence Oaks, an idyllic town by a lake just south of Melville. It's where this reporter counted down to 1986. And although, unfortunately, the fireworks started a little early, so we didn't quite manage to catch them on tape, take it from me, it was quite the spectacle, courtesy of postal worker Frank Coleman. Just a faulty batch of leftover 4th of July material, I guess. <laughs> Not mine, anyway. No, no siree. But I'm all right, folks. Really, everyone can stop calling me at home. I'm A-OK. -okay. And perhaps that encapsulates the true nature of Providence Oaks, or P.O., as it's called by those who know and love it. It's a town where, even when things don't go as planned, folks will be all right and A-OK. -okay. It's just, you know, we help each other out and there's nothing we can't fix. A town where first impressions can be deceiving. This town may look sleepy from the outside, but trust me, there's always so much stuff to do and take care of, ugh. A town where generations have grown up. It's a great place to raise kids, and also a, a great place to um, have been raised as a kid. Uh, myself, I mean. <laughs> Back when I was a kid, being raised here. <laughs> uh, was that okay? A town where patience is still a virtue. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure if this is where I'll find what I'm looking for. But I do know I can keep looking here for as long as I want. And that feels great. A town full of unique individuals that deep down have more in common than you'd think. The average Providence Oakian probably doesn't exist. We do tend to keep to ourselves until someone needs us. Then we show up, always. A town you can't help but love. You know, I just think it's the best place in the whole wide world. <sighs> Sue me. And where everyone has a story to tell. To me, it's all about the people. Because yes, well, leave it to the mailman.
to say it best. This is home. Indeed. Providence Oaks, like so many other places in our great state of Oregon, is a small town with a big heart. This is Connor Price, KNW6PO.